why do Asians live with their parents sometimes even even after they get married? Um, don't you think it promotes dependence instead of independence? And what about privacy? These are some of the most common questions I get from many of my Western friends whenever we talk about the living arrangements in Asian households. They know that many Asian households actually have multi-generational families and they struggle to understand that. It's really quite easy, I believe, to fall into the comfort of thinking that your own way of life, that your own belief in your own culture is the only sensible, reasonable, and correct one around. It's even more difficult to get out of your comfort zone, to shed your own beliefs and your own biases, and to forget and set aside your own um, values and your own principles just so you can understand somebody else's. But it makes total sense for everybody to do that, to sometimes force ourselves outside of our own beliefs in order to live um, harmoniously and to maybe grow uh, because that will afford you to see things from somebody else's perspective and that could contribute of course to your own growth. It doesn't mean that you're going to adapt that belief but understanding it would of course make you smarter. So to a lot of Westerners, it makes total sense and it is a second nature for them to live independently, to live outside of their parents' house as soon as they reach adulthood, and that's usually 18. After all, they think that an adult should actually acquire or have the capability to financially um, support themselves as soon as they hit 18. Except that this assumption has a fundamental error. It assumes that the only reason somebody would continue living with their parents is that they actually are incapable of financially supporting themselves. It ignores other possibilities. Number one, what if the person actually has a different financial strategy? Maybe the person is actually um, capable, fully capable of financially supporting themselves themselves when they move out of the house but they choose not to because financially it will make more sense to just be able to save more money for a future venture whether that's an investment or a future business second is that there's always this possibility that somebody is living with their parents because they just want to continue living with their parents <laughs> don't you think maybe it's the bond that they share maybe because they just like having people around maybe they like the security or maybe because they just love and enjoy the company of their parents and other family members. Next is the question of independence. A lot of Westerners believe that when you're living with your parents, you don't have the same amount of privacy that you actually need as an adult. Again, there's a fundamental error in this question and a fundamental error in this assumption. Number one error is that it assumes that we Asians actually define privacy the same way Westerners define privacy. Second, it assumes again that the that privacy that we value privacy the same way uh, Westerners value privacy. Privacy is a core tenet in in an, in American values. It's so important to them that I can actually argue the reason Americans are so polite is be, is the is their the importance that they put in privacy. They are so grateful for people who go out of their way to help them, to welcome them in their homes because they know that, that that in itself is a huge step, is a huge act of allowing people in in their independent space. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But I grew up in a household where doors are kept unlocked so that people can go in and out. Um, children can run in and out of the house when they, when they play. And to a lot of people, that's riveting. That's like a, a, an absolute no-no for them. But for us, it's just a way of life. We allow people, we allow more people to be a part of our lives. With this kind of connection with our community, it gives us um, more help, more assistance. There's more people that can be there with you when you need help. Whether it's a, a simple need to lift a furniture from one place to another, you can always call on everybody to help you. Whether it's a medical bill because you have an unexpected expense and the bill is quite high, then you can ask other people who are more willing to help you. It, as opposed to the Western Western culture, the whole social construct. In fact, I can even 
argue that the whole political construct is built upon independence. We've put up programs and, and systems and processes so that people will not need help when they need something. So for example, if they need medical assistance, they have a healthcare system so that they don't need money in order to get the treatment that they need. There's always the healthcare system for them. The other thing is that privacy for us isn't always the same uh, as privacy as a concept for, for many Americans. For many Americans, privacy extends to your personal space, your home, your properties, um, even your gender and your age. And to a lot of, of patients, that's not a thing. Like you can freely ask somebody's uh, age and that's not an invasion of privacy. That's just a part of our culture in Korea The first thing that you ask when you meet somebody is their age because you're supposed to address them a different way in a, in, in a certain way if they are older or if they are younger This just goes to prove that privacy is not an absolute Construct it's not an absolute concept. It is in fact a social construct Many Asians are just family-oriented. We are community-oriented. We want and we desire and we work in maintaining relationships between neighbors, with our neighbor, neighbors, with our family members, with our friends, with our relatives. And uh, the, we don't necessarily buy into the idea of absolute ind independence. We, for us, independence and maturity is a, uh, a long-term process rather than a, a line that you cross. So to be more concrete for Westerners, as soon as you reach 18, you're expected to move out of your parents' house and just live independently. Um, basically, live outside of your parents' <laughs> control or your parents' house. But to, to Asians, it's not an age that will dictate whether you're mature enough or not. Uh, it's just a gradual, most likely slow process. But I think the most central and the most critical and the most important explanation or reason for Asians continuing to live with their parents is the family orientedness. We believe that family should stay together and should stay connected and should strengthen the bond even after um, their children actually cross adulthood. Because it's a known fact that even that even when you start working, even after graduating from college, you continue to evolve as a person. There's a lot more influences that you take in. There's a lot more knowledge that you take in, wisdom and experiences, and that can change and shape you. And so families, Asian families, would want to be a part of that evolution instead of becoming detached from that evolution. We want to... Um, we want to we make an effort to make sure that we remain that the family values continue to be strong even after children start garnering new experiences and new beliefs getting even after they start getting exposed to new beliefs and new way of life and that goes into the other part of our culture we take care of our parents even when they grow old in western societies of course um, assisted living you know assisted living facilities or elder living facilities are very common when when uh, young older people actually become incapable of taking care of themselves independently they enter these homes um, sometimes they start with independent living facilities assisted living facilities and then actual homes but in Asia the children are actually expected to take care of their parents even if they are financially able to hire help um, and they will hire help but they still but they still choose to keep their parents inside their homes and so Asian Americans simply has not connected that practice into any kind of negative notion if we know that Asians, that, that people, that Asians, uh, Asian children continue to live with their parents even after adulthood, we don't look down up on them. We know that this is just a part of our culture. We don't have any kind of bias. We don't have any kind of stereotype. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, Asia is uh, not a monolith. There's more than 45 countries in Asia and each country has their own practice and their own culture. Many of these um, Asian countries are actually evolving as well. Many, Much, much more children are actually wanting to live independently of their parents. And there's nothing wrong with that and that's fine. 
But one thing that you will find very, very common is that even these people that con- that are now desiring to live on their own, they don't look down on people, on other Asians that choose to live with their parents because they know that the culture does not dictate or does not impose any kind of taboo in that kind of practice. So the one thing that I would suggest, I think just in general, is that it, whenever you encounter something new, whenever you encounter something you have never encountered before, the best thing to do is to try and shed your biases, to get off your to take off your own shoes, take off your own values for a minute just to, so you can um, actually objectively look at things with with fairness um, because that will allow you to grow. It doesn't mean that you will agree and adapt that practice, but at least it's going to make you smarter because understanding somebody else's culture is always a progressive thing to do. Thanks.